Hi, welcome to another Lemon Amiga guide. This is Dan from Lemon Amiga taking you through the installation steps to running Win UAE on a PC. And for this, we are going to need an Amiga which has Workbench 2 or above, a blank double density floppy disk that's done without the hole in it, a PC running Windows XP or above, preferably, and we're going to need the internet as well connected to at least your PC so first of all let's plug the disk in the drive and take a look at it it's important that you find a double density disk for this and these aren't easy to come by in this day and age the, this is Windows 7 format you'll notice there that Windows 7 only allows you to format 1.44 meg onto a disk these days no matter what options you try so to format the 720 disk on Windows XP or above you will have to use a DOS trick so go down to the start menu and click it click on programs and type CMD C for crack M for mega D for drive so CMD and that will come up from the command line we can type CD to return to the C prompt CD dot dot and then we will need to go into the Windows directory and system 32 and from here we can type format uh, a colon which is the drive uh, tracks equals 80 tracks and n equals 9 for the number of sectors and after the number of prompts that say this disk will be deleted if you should do that start the format and that will take quite some time so let's just format that up so 100% so this disk is formatting and now that we have a formatted floppy disk we can then give that a drive name in this case I'll just call that Amiga blank just give it a file name and it will ask to format another no and now we can close that down and the disk in the drive should now be formatted let's just check that click on the drive go down to properties and you can see there 730 bytes is formatted on the disk so that's now a blank floppy the next thing we'll need to do is to make a directory on our hard drive somewhere i'm just going to call this amiga and then it's time to get back on the internet so here we need to download win uae the latest version and I'm going to click on download there to take me straight to the WinUAE download page the latest version up to press is 2.4.1 and we can select the installer or the zip archive for this I'd recommend the installer and we can save that to our PC that will only take a number of seconds and once that is down there it is we can drag that into the uh, Amiga directory that we've just created and I'm just going to run that from there and this is the installation of WinUAE you can more or less click on next all the way through it to use the standard options you can change different options in the install but we're just going to leave this as normal for now change the destination drive to our Amiga so storage and Amiga that's the directory we've just created and it will install WinUAE in that place so now WinUAE is installed we can take a look at that this is the installation and in the Amiga programs directory we will find a program called TransROM and there it is TransROM this is the program we will need to rip the ROM on our Amiga so let's just copy that into the Amiga directory so that you can see that on its own and what we shall do with that program is copy that into the A drive and that seems to have disappeared from the listing so let's go back to the computer again click on the disk and that should appear in the drives over there on the left and there it is so let's go back to the Amiga directory and drag that in there and it will take a little bit of time to do that and let's just click on that disk to make sure it's on there trans rom there it is on our pc 720 disk so if you can't find trans rom in the win uae archive for whatever reason 
I've also mirrored it on this FTP site and you can type that name in and that will download the TransROM package, the TransROM program for you to be able to copy that onto your disk but while it's on there all we need to do is to boot the Amiga and for this I'm going to use an Amiga 1200 it's got Workbench 3.1 on there but Kickstart 3.0 and if you put the Workbench disk in to your Amiga 1200 find the system drawer and click on shell that will bring up the Amiga shell DOS prompt type mount PCO to mount cross DOS and that will enable us to read the PC disk insert the disk into the drive and type PCO and that should take us to the disk with TransROM on there and all we need to do is copy TransROM to RAM and then RAM colon will take us to the RAM drive on our Amiga and let's just do a quick DIR to make sure it's on there there it is TransROM and the magic formula is TransROM put the arrow in there to RAM and we're going to call this kick.rom it doesn't matter what name you call that output file as long as it ends in .rom so list that out we can see the ROM um, is um, half a meg and ends in 288 bytes and that 288 bytes means that this is the correct size for the Amiga ROM this should be half a meg and then let's just copy that kick ROM back to the PCO back to the disk and once that's copied on there we can then return to our PC select the drive there it is kick ROM and we can now copy that kick ROM file to the Amiga directory which we created earlier on so let's just do that copy that off from the disk which takes some time because it's half a meg don't forget so it takes time so let's just speed that process up a little bit to save us that time and then if we click on the Amiga drive make sure it's in there kick ROM there it is and at this point I'm just going to make another directory in that folder and we can name this whatever we like ROMs directory Amiga ROMs I'm just going to call it ROMs in this instance and what we need to do is copy the kick ROM or whatever we've called the dot ROM and copy that in there and now we've got the ROM on our PC from our Amiga then all we need to do is to run WinUAE and set that up to recognize the ROM so let's launch the program click on ROM and click the ROM that we've uh, downloaded in this case and it seems to recognize that as Kickstart 3 and that means it's working and to double check that if we also go up to the paths directory and click on the drive requester there we will select the ROMs directory as the location for our ROMs and after a quick scan the program will tell you which ones are available and as you can see the Amiga 1200 is available and the rest are not so make sure that cache configuration file is in there so that will auto save and now that we've got the ROMs path set up that's also configured our configuration to an Amiga 1200 all 20 there AGA Amiga 1200 chipset and this is simply auto configured from the ROM file that we found and it's given us some memory there and nothing in the floppy drives at the moment and no hard drives as yet we'll cover how to set up hard drives hard disk files in the next part and let's just have a look at display for this we'll change it to uh, full screen so that appears full screen on our computer we can also change the v-syncs as well but I'm just gonna leave that blank we can change double buffering or triple buffering if you have a slow PC and you can also center the uh, screen as well uh, and we can also change the screen mode of the native windowed mode or the full screen mode and change the bit depth as well 16 or 32 tends to work similarly I find uh, leave the resolution on high res uh, or you will get odd results if you don't do that you can change the uh, frames per second as well the frame rate should your Amiga be running slow 
can change the refresh rate and blacker than black uh, is an option that you can change so the blacks on the Amiga are actually true black rather than Amiga black so we will highlight the centering there on full screen and that's the display set up taking a look at the sound options we can change the sound frequency and here we will find the master volume for the floppy emulation sound and also the master volume and taking a look at the controls uh, we can use keyboard mouse or if you have a usb or a parallel port joystick we can select that from here and when we are happy with our configuration we can save that configuration so to do this i'm going to go to the paths again and configure the configuration path i'm going to create a new directory and call that configs again it doesn't matter what drive name we'll give that as so long as it's linked in the path and now that we've set up that configs directory we can click on configurations and click on save and or save as in this case and that will bring up a requester and i'm just going to save that as my standard configuration there is only one since we have just the one rom in this machine and there it is that will be automatically saved and every time we should need to run WinUAE in the future, all we need to do is click on the icon, click configurations, click on the one that we've saved and click load. And as you can see, that will reload the configuration that we've just saved with all the settings, all the correct settings in place. And just checking those. And the only other important tab is the miscellaneous tab. And in here we can change the screen draw method from direct draw to direct 3d if you have a an old card probably direct draw is the best otherwise it will come up with direct x runtime errors for some reason but now that we've selected that direct draw we can now click on start to check our emulation out and we can see there it will boot the 3.0 rom that we've just copied from our amiga and that works so the next thing we need is an ADF, an Amiga disk file. And if we go up to floppy drives and click on the disk requester, I've already set up the ADFs in a, an ADF directory. And you can certainly download Amiga disk files from the internet. So once you have downloaded an ADF and you have selected it in that floppy disk drive requester, we can change the speed of that floppy drive, turbo all the way up to 800% and that will mean the game will load quickly so for this i'm going to insert motorola invaders and it's a two disc game so we can eject the first disc select the second disc and click on open and then ok and that will act as a disc swap and for this i'm also going to turn on the a500 built-in floppy disk drive sound emulation and turn the master volume of that down a little bit and when I click on OK, you can hear that drive, so I'm just going to reduce that a little bit and load that up. And this is the game all loaded up from an ADF. I'm just going to reduce that floppy sound emulation a little bit more and allow the game to run through. So this is Motorola Invaders, this is an AGA game, just to check out the AGA capabilities of our Amiga 1200 ROM. And as you can see it works, so I'm just going to, um, I'm actually going to reduce the master volume to reduce the uh, system audio there. And uh, returning to our control systems, this game uses joystick only or keyboard, uh, I can select the mouse there and swap the configuration is over and that will attempt to use the mouse but you cannot use the mouse on this game so you can see the things wobbling about but there you go that's how you run games and install win you thank you